welcome to the Goddess Chronicles. This is a new series we're doing leading up to the Goddess Conference where every week we are going to talk to some of our favourite people in town. And today we have the wonderful, wonderful John Wadsworth with us. John, could you please introduce yourself and tell us about your path in Avalon and what brought you here? Sure, yeah. So I arrived in Avalon in 2008 and um, I was drawn here by, by the land, really, by the, by the Glastonbury Zodiac. As an astrologer, um, an, a, an astrologer deeply involved in the Zodiac as um, what I call 12 gateways to wholeness, the, the idea that we all carry this powerful ancient imaginal map within us. I've been working with that idea for many years before I discovered the Glastonbury Zodiac and was drawn here. But when I discovered that there was this imaginal temple of the stars in the land, you know, the idea that the, the star and the Glastonbury Zodiac is based on the idea that the, the stars are mapped onto the earth and represented on the earth in this extraordinary way, it was just irresistible to me. So that was what drew me here, really. That's what drew me to Glastonbury. And um, and it began a kind of a whole a whole journey for me. And I think, um, yeah, that m my relationship with 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 any it's, it, I have a deeper relationship with this land, I would say, than any other land that I've ever been. You know, and I've travelled a lot around the world, but this place always draws me back like a magnet. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, well, I mean, as I think about that question, I think about the nature of the sky that as astrologers we work with. We've inherited a very patriarchal cosmos. <laughs> you know, most of, the, most of the figures, most of the ancient figures that we have in our, represented as the images in, in the heavens are uh, male figures and most of the stories carry very strong um, patriarchal themes. There were only three female figures in the sky and two of them are in chains. Cassiopeia is tied to her throne, Andromeda is chained to a rock. Actually Virgo, the constellation of Virgo, one of the constellations of, of the zodiac of course, is the only free female figure in the sky, the harvest goddess, you know, the, the representation of the goddess in the heavens. And I've actually got an image of her that I'll show you. This is, this is, uh, this is the figure of Virgo in the Glastonbury Zodiac. Here she is, wonderful. Old Mother Carey, uh, Bab Carey, Babe Carey, here she is. I don't know if you can see, but she has a pregnant, um, she's pregnant with child, you know, in a place called Bab Carey or Babe Carey, isn't that wonderful? You know, there she is, there she's holding the wheat sheaf with the Mary Magdalene Chapel at Cainton Mandeville on her, you know, on, on the end of the sheaf there. I mean, so much rich symbolism. As there is throughout the Glastonbury Zodiac, I've actually got, a, got an image here of, or got a map here rather, of the Zodiac. This is Mary Kane's map. There's a woman called Catherine Maltwood who actually discovered the Zodiac almost a hundred years ago. And then, and then a woman called Mary Kane took it over sort of after Catherine Maltwood died and she created this wonderful map and she did some amazing work in the Zodiac. And here is, the Glastonbury Zodiac and of course here we are at Glastonbury tour with the tour behind us on the Aquarius figure just here in the Zodiac you see the Zodiac it reaches out like 11 miles 11 mile circle around um, Glastonbury there it is and if you can see that the wind and everything there we go and um, if you could just take that thanks and um, yeah so for for about 10 years um, with a colleague of mine, we we um, we took people on this pilgrimage through the zodiac um, each month while the sun was in that sign, and engaged with the land in this deep symbolic, meaningful way. And for me, this what we realised in that was that this is, you know, that the land actually teaches you if you can be sensitive enough, and if your symbolic imagination can be informed enough, you can. Be literally be spoken to by the land, and for me that is an expression of the goddess here in Avalon. Yeah. We talked a little bit yesterday, and I found it so fascinating about how 
this is a season of Virgo that we've just mm. moved through and you mm. can see it so much yeah. in, in Mayborn and the, the way the earth gives back to us but how we need to nurture her as well and yeah. that was fascinating. Yeah. Also, um, could you tell us a little bit about the magic of this season with um, Libra standing between Virgo and Scorpio because I thought that was so interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, in the zodiac you have two symbols, Virgo and Scorpio, they look very similar. They're both like depicted as an M, but the Virgo has the has this extra part, which is like the the wheat sheaf cutting the the wheat. But it could also be some people see a fish in there, which it shows that the opposite sign of Pisces is implicit within it. But that could also be the yoni. That's another way of seeing the the Virgo figure. You know that you've got the yoni there representing childbirth the the mythic tradition around virgo is of parthenogenesis the idea of virgin birth you know obviously we have that in the christian story which is which is a perhaps some kind of retelling of the egyptian story of isis and horus and this idea of virginity which is so i think misunderstood in many ways or literalized in in modern understanding but as a ritual act of purification where the with that involves the withdrawal of the of the outer sexual urge and the perfection through a kind of purification rite and practice of an inner alchemy an inner sexual alchemy which may kind of make us think of things like tantra or taoism that, that we have to perfect this inner alchemy within and then we give birth symbolically and perhaps the ancients even believe literally to a to a divine child of light you know and then we have scorpio separated by the arbiter libra the kind of referee between <laughs> between them now it's become you know we have we have scorpio which carries really the sexual energy the energy of deep desire the the, the powerful psychological aspect of feminine sexual energy if you like so you know we've ended up in a way with the kind of virgin and the whore that's how it's kind of come out but it's a, that's a very much a a patriarchal reduction of a much much richer idea of the feminine in her completeness so you know if if we allow we allow Libra to be the one who holds the tension between these apparent opposites that aren't really opposites because really they're two aspects of the same thing you know which really is you know and, and, and I often something that we contemplate on the journey that we take that we ran here for years is called the alchemical journey in Glastonbury we often would contemplate that deep mystical relationship between Virgo and Scorpio as the, and, and, and imagine them coming together and what that would release in the goddess energy in the zodiac and in ourselves. And, yeah. um, I, I, last question, but I know we talked about it a little bit already in, in what you've told, told us and shown us with the map, but as an astrologer, how do you experience and express your connection with the goddess and Avalon through? For, for me, it, for, specifically in Avalon, for me it's through walking the land really, through pilgrimage, through going to special sites, power places in the land, this land of course, you know, this extraordinary land of, in Glastonbury of Avalon and the, the, this, this mystical place. But for me, Glastonbury extends also into the whole temple, you know, which takes us out of Glastonbury itself and I see Avalon as the wider landscape and there are there are places on each zodiac sign that for me are sacred places that I visit at particular moments of the moon or times of the year and that's where I kind of make my offering and for me that, that there's something of the journeying with this with the seasons with the year or even perhaps with a lunar cycle and making those offerings through going to these places and just acknowledging them and engaging with the power the power the imaginal power that is there for me that's a that's a, an, a, a it, it's about acknowledging the wholeness connecting each place together in my in you know from the sky in myself in the land arising out of of the of the land it's a dialogue we're in dialogue and that for me is a is a deeply mystical process which is i think facilitated by the goddess yeah above so below it must be so fascinating to see this link between the stars and the land yeah and um, what do you 
what's been your biggest lesson in, in discovering it and experiencing it? Have you it's the embodiment of it, you know, it's the embo you know, for me astrology has, is an embodied art, you know, it's not just, we're not just looking up at the stars, the planets aren't just the physical planets that turn, they, they are one aspect of the planet. The planet is actually in, in us and it's in the land and it's in everything around us, in nature, through this process of correspondence and diet and participation and we, it's it's really about how how we integrate that in our embodied experience and for me the land the, and, and, and powerful landscape like this especially when it's been rendered imaginally in the imaginal world in the way that it has through the landscape zodiac that's an incredible gift for me it's like a wonderful playground of the soul Glastonbury Zodiac and this amazing landscape and it's changed me deeply being here maybe much more sensitive and to subtle the more subtle dialogue that arises out of you know this extraordinary landscape yeah. thank huh. you so much John this has been such a fascinating Pleasure. fascinating interview I feel like I've learnt a lot mm. and I really look forward to hopefully interviewing you a little bit more with the Goddess Chronicles. Thank you. Can I just mention my book? This is uh, Your Zodiac Soul, which really um, com comes out of the, the many years of work that I did here in Glastonbury. Um, really looks at the Zodiac as a medicine wheel, as 12 gateways to wholeness. It's a 12 stage inquiry process into, the, into who we are and this idea that, you know, by acknowledging that we carry the Zodiac within us, yeah. Within each of us, within each of the whole, tw the whole wheel, exactly. Yeah. Wow. So, there it is. That is fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much.